Exactly. Let's find out what Dr. Wisdom Enang, an oil and gas expert, has to say about this. Dr. Enang, good afternoon. Uh, so the issue of subsidy or no subsidy comes up again. The NNPC say they have not paid subsidy to anybody in, I think, nine years. But perhaps we should know the landing cost. That will help us to know if there's a subsidy, and then we can now look for where it's being paid from, you know, and all the controversy around uh, directives for NNPC to pay, uh, use revenue and all of that for subsidy and all of that. Perhaps you can, you are in the industry, please. Do clear the air. We're looking for the truth. Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, the thing is, uh, actually, there is some sort of subsidy, but for some time, the government has been calling it the price cap. And what is the landing cost? It's anywhere between 1,150 to 1,250. That's what we're looking at, uh, depending because the number of factors, the amount of volume that we're getting in, as well as the exchange rate at the time. Now, when you consider the guide price of about 620 for most retail stations in Lagos, uh, all the way to 650 on a normal basis. You find out that definitely there must be, someone is paying for the difference and, and that's the government. And um, definitely the government is doing that through the NMPC, which is uh, uh, the sole importer of PMS in this context. So definitely we are paying subsidy, although they've been calling a price cap, but I think my biggest worry is the opportunity cost of the recent uh, release from the uh, uh, presidency for the NMPC to defray the cost of the subsidy using some of the, uh, uh, the, the money they're supposed to send into the federation accounts, because that affects the states, that also affects uh, being able to fund that budget. So definitely there is an opportunity cost, and this, uh, this kind of begs to uh, ask the question whether or not the subsidy thing is very sustainable in the long run, or whether we should be looking at actually boosting our domestic production capacity uh, to be able to meet our energy needs. I guess that speaks to, I mean, a lot of uncertainty and maybe and suspicious and allegedly, you know, all around that. Um, we cannot categorically, because the government would not categorically tell us if they're paying subsidy or not. And yet we know the landing cost and we know how much we're paying, you know, at the pump. Who's paying for it? Um, is NNPC paying for it? Has NNPC remitted you know, anything to the uh, federal national coffers and all of that. I, I guess that's why uh, someone like Mr. Rani will say we need to know the truth and then perhaps we can move on and solve our problem uh, transparently. Absolutely. I mean, there are a number of nuances that we, you know, that uh, characterize the entire sector that we need to know. For example, um, subsidy is one thing. But we do also know right now that the problem, I mean, it's been tapped an evacuation problem by the NMPC. But what we do know is that a lot of the people who are supplying PMS cargoes to us either need cash or they need crude cargo uh, in return. And, you know, when we're not able to get that agreement in place, that is one other problem that comes. And then we begin to have, uh, you know, sort of shortages in our supply volume. We also do know that uh, a number of these people that supply food to us are, uh, you know, the, the 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 frequency that we do receive this crude, I think this sorry this PMS, I think is every you know about sixty to ninety days, and and that that's because we do not have a strategic storage reserve for us to be able to uh, buffer the uh, you know the uh, supply, have a supply buffer that if we do not have you know say it's something that goes wrong contractually there is no supply at that material point in time, it will not ground the entire country to a halt. So the, the truth is, um, the devil is in the details, and we need to get into the detail, both from the economic standpoint, from the supply standpoint, from the infrastructure standpoint, to ask ourselves critical question, how are we going to end these uh, kind of deja vu that keeps coming on and off on the uh, fuel supply issue? And every now and then, if we cannot do anything in 60 to 90 days, to get new inventories in, we have another set of, uh, you know, queues come up. And, and that's something, we, a conversation I think we need to start having. How do we get a more permanent solution to this problem? I guess a permanent solution, Dr. Nang, would be that we have local refiners. And we hear a lot of local refiners, the modular refineries, Dangote, asking for crude 
so that we can have at least a bit of stability, certainty in the uh, uh, supply value chain of, of petroleum products in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's um, that's a sustainable solution because, you know, I beg to differ with the idea from the NMDPRA that we should import to be able to shore off, uh, you know, the possibility uh, of uh, a monopoly. I, I don't believe that's sustainable just because, you know, whenever you meet around any solution from an economic standpoint, you want to compare that solution, uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, benefits of the solution to the, um, you know, the side effects, uh, you know, in this case that we're talking about the economy. So, yes, that's a, a very good one. And the other thing that I'd like to mention is uh, when we're looking at the concern of monopoly, uh, increasing supply is one way to, you know, prevent it. The other way is as we're giving out our crude supply in Naira to the domestic refineries, which I hope we can give up to the 450,000 barrels a day that we're looking at, that we do uh, put in some anti-monopoly clauses within there to make sure that, yes, they do take it in Naira, they do have uh, the supply, that means they don't have to pay logistics costs, they don't have to pay all the insurance uh, that, you know, for bringing this uh, truth, you know, compared to bringing it abro from abroad. But that when they eventually do put out their pricing, that that pricing also considers the uh, the effects of um, and the benefits of getting this uh, crude supply in Naira. I think that's the way we should be thinking about and uh, making sure that we help other refineries to come on board. I don't think importation is going to help us. And I think we need to start building strategic reserves for PMS. I'll give you context. The U.S., for example, they are, uh, you know, they've, they've been uh, producing for as long as we know. but they do have a strategic storage. And at some point, they were actually importing when the prices was fair enough for them to import. They were actually importing and storing crude. So there's nothing wrong with actually producing PMS in this context or producing refined petroleum products and also building strategic storage reserves to be able to store them. And I think we can achieve this by using the uh, build, operate, and transfer model. Put some icing on the cake, get some investors to come. That's a midstream sector. Get some good tariff, get some good um, you know, offtake agreements that you would make with them, a storage agreement tariffs, and then get them to come in there and subscribe and build that, uh, that, that, those strategic storage for us. And then we know that at every point in time, we do have maybe a year's inventory. So if anything happens to our supply agreements and we cannot get fill in, we always have something that will give us a buffer and then we don't, we don't have scarcity, fuels, and price hike. And remember, whilst we were talking about Lagos, uh, uh, you know, the, the skills in Lagos, there are states like Aquibum states that has always had to pay over 900 naira for fuel. And that's no motive for them, and that shouldn't be the case. If we have the right, uh, you know, sort of um, uh, supply imperatives in place, shouldn't be the case where some states are paying as low, as high as nine hundred to a thousand, and that's normal for them. That shouldn't be the case. All right. So uh, I think the other thing is uh, the promise that the crude for Naira will start on October one. Uh, talking to a couple of stakeholders, stakeholders, uh, they are saying. I mean, we're talking about availability of crude first before we see, you know, it being available for the Naira. And that makes that promise even a bit shaky at this time. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you're right. Um, you know, at the moment, we're struggling with our production rates because uh, I think it's about 1.3 at the moment. Uh, before now, in 2023, we went up to 1.5 uh, daily production million uh, bar barrels uh, daily production. And, you know, we're asking ourselves, do we truly have the volumes to give? So it's good that we have a guide volume that we're expecting. The 450,000 barrels is the guide volume that we're expecting to give to um, those refineries. However, um, we need to do a lot more. Tackling theft is going to bring us some more incremental volume, but I think there's a there's a, a ceiling potential on that. What we need to start doing is to start looking at reliability. How do we improve our facility reliability to flow a lot more volumes in there? How do we do some secondary, some primary interventions and even secondary interventions to bring up more volumes in the wells? How well do we, uh, you know, help? Uh, you know, the investors that are coming to the bid rounds to quickly start their, produ their production, uh, sorry, their exploration and production activities. I think it's quite good that we're, uh, Nigeria is leaning on the side of production bonus than signing up bonus for, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, have been rounds. And, and that's a very good thing. And I'd like to encourage that. So there's enough that we need to do. There's a, a number of things that we need to do to bring back uh, more production volumes if we need to be in a position where we can meet those, uh, you know, so, sort of obligations of giving 450,000 barrels uh, to the local refineries in Naira. All right, a whole lot of things to do there. And uh, I mean, eventually what we want is energy security, petroleum products, electricity. It all boils down to that. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Wisdom and oil and gas experts. Thank, thank you. Deeply appreciate it.